It's probably worth a couple of minutes looking at the frames before I start moving on with the next operation. As I said in the last video, most of the principles I applied for making these, doing the various cutouts and, and drilling the various holes, was the same as the approach for the buffer beam. However, as we can see, the frames, or one frame here, the right hand side, is significantly larger than the working area on my milling table, which is probably about half to two thirds the length. I started off using the rear right as a reference point and from there marking the centres for each of the axles. I think it's on the other side but I scribed lines on these centres and it's those scribed lines I then used as my reference point for the relative holes around that particular axle. And as with the buffer beam using the DRO for all the relevant offsets to drill the holes which I then centre drilled and drilled. As we can see here there's a larger hole here, there's a 19mm three quarter on the original design so I've gone for 90 mil. I drilled that out as far as I could and then used an end mill to bring it out to the final size. The other two larger diameter holes at this end I just used slot drills for, nice and simple. This particular set of holes here at the front are for the cylinder, mounting the cylinder and the cylinder stretcher. All of these holes are taken from a centre line which runs from a point on the front of the frames round about here back to the centre line of the axle and the rear cutout. To drill these holes I scribed that line on the frame or the other frame, the left hand side, which was of course bolted to this frame and then I used that centre line to align the frames to the table such that centre line was parallel to the x-axis. That then allowed me to offset accordingly and use the DRO to drill all of these holes in this area here. With both the frames now cut and drilled to the design the next job is to fix them to the buffer beams. It's probably worth noting as well that there are a few additional holes on the right hand only frame, particularly towards the back. In fact I think the hole on the back does nothing this front end here. So all of these holes you can see are common to the left hand frame. Just to mark the holes on the brackets and the buffer beams I'm going to be using the holes on the frames themselves. So to do that I've got the buffer beam, in this case the front, a buffer beam is clamped to an angle plate which is clamped itself onto the mill table. The front buffer beam is upside down so top is downwards in this case to allow for the cutouts to extend on the rear and the front of the frames. That will make sense in a second I'm sure. By using the milling table for this I can be fairly confident I'm setting up the frames with respect to the buffer beams correctly so there should be a nice 90 degree angle between the two. What I do now is I'll put the frame on the table, probably move the camera around so you can get a better view and then clamp the frame to the bracket and mark it through with the drill. So I've had to reposition the whole setup in the milling table because I wasn't able to get the drill in, obvious with hindsight, and even now I'm only going to get access to the two holes that are further back. I'll have to make a little tool to get to the other ones which I'll do after I've marked the first two. Getting access to 3.7mm holes has obviously been a problem for me before because I looked at my box and I already have this little tool made up. Basically it's just a bit of bar which has been drilled out to 3.7mm and then a 3.7mm drill bit has been glued into place. The two small holes at the top I'm not going to do now because the clamp is blocking access. I'll take this off now clamp the buffer beam to the angle and drill and tap those four holes to 4BA. Drilling and tapping the holes in the bracket is a relatively simple exercise. First I use a wiggler to position the quill directly over the pop mark. Then I centre drill and drill the hole out to tapping size and then run a tap down through for the two holes up against the bracket. I use another homemade tool where I've glued a tap into a piece of bar so I can get access. I then repeat all of this for the other three corners ending up with a set of frames I can now bolt together. Don's design for the frame stretches is quite interesting. Unfortunately bending 3mm mild steel plate at these sizes is going to be a bit of a challenge for me. I don't have a break. I could use some heat and a hammer but I'm not sure the results will be too good. A common approach that I see many others use is to either bolt or rivet some angle iron onto some 3mm plate to give the necessary shape but I don't think that looks too good. I took a different approach in that I welded the angle onto the 3mm plate, therefore giving a much cleaner profile. I tried it with both MIG and with TIG welding, 
and of the two the latter the TIG welding gave the better results. I didn't get any video of the MIG welding so there's not much to show on that side other than the finished parts. For the TIG other than where I tacked the parts together I didn't use filler rod therefore alleviating the need to remove any excess material. My welding skills are rudimentary at best and a little bit more practice before diving straight in would have helped because as I progressed the quality of my welding did significantly improve. With the welder completed it was just a case of cutting the individual stretchers out from the parts I'd welded together and then squaring up the ends and sides in the miller machine. Don's drawings showed that the 6BA holes that need to be tapped in the sides of the stretcher need to be spotted through from the frames. I think that harks back to olden days, pre people having mills in their garages and mills equipped with DROs. So it's not an approach I'm going to take. With five stretchers, each containing 12 holes, it'll take me quite a while to be doing that. I'm going to shortcut that process and work on the basis that by using a milling machine along with the DRO, I've got a better degree of accuracy or sufficient degree of accuracy to enable me to do this directly from the stretchers. So I've got a setup on the table, we've got an angle plate which is set at uh, 90 degrees to the x-axis, that's on the y-axis. I've got a little stop here and the idea is that I can position each of the stretches up against the stop as my index, clamp them in place. I will zero the DRO against the angle plate and then offset it to 6mm and then I can take a zero for the y-axis off the bottom of the stretcher here and then drill and tap all my holes accordingly from those reference points. A few hours spent drilling and tapping too many 4BA holes and I was able to assemble the frames and the stretches. There are 12 4 ba holes in each of the stretchers, apart from the cylinder stretcher at the front which just has 10 5BA clearance holes because it's mounted differently. I've got it all bolted together, although it looks neat from this side, it's actually a motley collection of bolts of different lengths which I will replace at some point, but these frames will be apart numerous times over the coming weeks. There are some tweaks required. When I measured it I noticed that the rear of the frames on the rear buffer beam are slightly closer together than what they are at the front. So it's pinched in at the back by about 0.2-0.3mm. That will mean the brackets on the buffer beam will need resetting. Or conversely I could just try and get some shim material to, to put it in there. In reality I don't think it's a big deal so I may even leave it. The stretches that I made were all looking okay. The two MIG welded ones I've got sitting horizontally. I may change that around because I got a bit carried away with the angle grinder when I was cleaning up the welds. Having said that, the other stretches I've got positioned vertically, the ones I've MIG welded, the bead, which is not particularly good, is visible. But ultimately these are unseen parts. They're functional and don't need to look good. You may notice I've already started on the buffers as well, but we'll come back to those in a separate video. So I think I'll wrap this video up here. It's been hard work, monotonous work, but ultimately I'm pleased with the results. Thanks for watching.